Okay, so welcome back. Um, in this video, we are going to focus on validation because sooner or later we're going to need it and we might as well do it now and then make everything clear uh, once we start introducing other concepts like tokens and Mongo database and things like that. So um, to do that, we, what we really want to do is we want to validate some data before um, that data get passed to some of these functions. So to do that, we're going to actually create a new folder inside of our um, main project and we're going to call it helpers. And in case you watched some of my um, other videos, particularly the ones on the Node API, um, project then this is going to be really similar almost the same okay so what we need to do is we need to create a new file in this folder and let's call it route helpers.js like this and in this file we're going to create some sort of a abstract function that is going to use um, the schema that we provide so that we can validate um, our requests. Now we're going to be using the joy uh, module for this and in case you're not aware of it I'm going to show you um, its github page. Okay, so this is the joy's um, github page. Um, as you can see it is a part of the happy.js um, framework, but you can use it um, inside of any other node based frameworks. And it is really neat in my opinion, because you don't really need to validate like one parameter per line of code inside of your um, say controller or something like that. But instead you declare a schema and then you simply validate the entire body um, uh, object. Uh, against that schema and then you end up with either some sort of errors or everything is good and you can proceed. So if you want to read more about this uh, module, you can come here to this URL and read it yourself. They also have example here and some more examples over here, but they also have this API reference that goes into a lot of details which we are not going to do in this series, but in case you want to keep on using Joy and in case something happens which I didn't cover here, you can you can browse over here and pretty much get an answer to your problems. So moving on, let us actually start doing something in this file. So what we want to do is first of all we need to actually install um, the, the Joy itself. Okay, so I just opened the commander on Windows. I prefer using this because it allows me to use um, Linux based um, and Mac OS based um, commands instead of the Windows ones. So what I'm going to do is now install it. Now I'm, I'll be using the yarn, but as I said previously, you can use npm. I'll go yarn add and then joy. And that should be quickly done. Okay. So now what I need to do is to actually get a handle on it. So I'm going to create a new uh, variable, actually a new constant called joy and it's going to require the joy package. Next, what we want to do is we want to immediately um, export something out of this file because everything will pretty much be exported. So what I want to do is I want to have one function that is going to call a validator body, which is going to take a schema for the argument and it is going to be a fat arrow function and next I want to have an object called schemas which will contain all of the schemas that we'll need in this project. So first let's take a second and actually see what type of schemas we'll actually need. So if I navigate to this user.js file we can see we have these three routes so we have sign up, sign in and secret. Sign up um, is going to call the users controller dot sign up and this is the one. So in here we want to actually get a handle on the user's email and password so that we can actually create a new account for that user. So this function over here will expect to get email and password from the user. So these are the type of things that we need to validate before coming in this sign up function. Now the sign in is going to be a bit different because the process in which the user exchanges already uh, existing email and password for the token, which is going to happen for the sign in, is going to be delegated to the password.js. So we don't actually need to do validation over here because by the time code inside of this function actually gets executed, 
the pass to JS, he's already validated the user. We just need to generate um, a token inside of here. So let's say for now we need to generate um, token. Okay, and this secret, well, this is a get request. So we definitely don't need to do any validations over here. So we knowing that, we pretty much need to validate the email and password only. So we're going to come here in this file and now in these schemas, we're going to create a new schema. Let's call it authentication schema, something like this. And it's going to be of a type joy.object and then this object will have a keys function which will accept the object inside and then in here we need to specify all the properties that we want to validate one by one so the first is going to be the email and it is going to be joy and then string so the email is actually a type of string, but also we have this is email actually, which will um, we will check whether there is all the formatting that emails usually contain. And then we can tag on the required because it is required field. Next, we also want to validate the password and password is going to be joy.string again. Now I'm just going to leave it as joy.string and I'll say that it is required, but something that you could um, do inside of this line is maybe you want to limit the length of the password. Maybe you want to say like minimum six, maximum like 25 or something. So you can of course do that over here using the joy as well. But for now, let's keep things simple because that's not really the focus of this series and leave it like this. Now in this validate body function, it will actually receive one of these um, schemas and it will actually need to check whether everything is correct. So what we want to do is we'll need to get access to the request response next, pretty much like how, how we have access to them inside of our controllers. So we'll need to actually return return from, from inside of this function straight away we're going to return request response and then next and have yet another fat arrow function. And this will get uh, passed this function when we call it inside of here, like as a middleware before this controller. So what we need to do here is we need to check whether the data that got sent passed this validation. So we're going to create a new variable called result. And this variable will get populated by the joy.validate function. Now this function will contain the thing that we want to validate, which is request.body itself and then the schema that we want to validate that body against. So something like this. Now, if this result contains any error, so we're going to say if result.error is there, what we want to do is we want to actually return. So we don't actually want, we just want to finish everything inside of this line and return back to the client response containing a status code of 400 and we can pass it as a JSON and simply let's pass to the client that error object, which will say like email is missing or stuff like that. But if there aren't any errors, what we want to do is we want to, to attach to this request object uh, a property called value and then we want to attach to this um, value uh, property a property called body. So, so in the end we want to we have access to all of these validated fields by typing request.value and then the body instead of typing request.body itself. The request.body will still be there, but we'll know when we're accessing this that those are actually the validated values. So what we need to do is first check whether the whether the request.value isn't there. And in that case, we want to actually create request.value and simply initialize it to an empty object like this. And then we want to say um, request.value and then we want to create a sub object called a body. And we simply want to say that this is equal to result.value like this. Now uh, we're almost done, but if we don't um, if we don't write next over here then this middleware will pretty much like block the the code over here and it wouldn't get past these uh, controllers so we quickly need to type next um, here to call this next function and this is good to go so now we can go back inside of the uh, inside of our routes file and we actually need to require the the route helpers. So we want to access um, the b both things from the 
route helpers file. So I'm going to use the ES6 destructors for that. I'm going to say validate body and then schemas. And I'm going to say that equals to require and then we need to specify the path to it and it is we need to navigate up one directory and then helpers folder and then route helpers like this so now what we can do is we can come here and let's say before we actually um, send this request to the sign up function we can simply come here and say first of all um, validate body and when doing so use the schemas called authentication schema like this and only then will we navigate to this controller so what will actually happen is this so let's say that the client makes a post request to this route slash sign up and uh, there will be a body containing some data so what will happen is the express will actually call this validate body first of all and that will execute this function over here in this in this function over here is if everything is okay will continue on and will actually call the user controller dot sign up which will in turn call this function over here and then this function over here will have access to all the body data uh, by calling request.value.body like this but in the case in which something was wrong say the email wasn't provided this validate body function over here will actually um, respond back to the client for us with the status of 400 and with the particular error and this controller will not even get called which is really cool we, we in, in that scenario we just want to simply like early exit and don't really bother the controller at all because we don't have a valid data so now that is really good and and for the sign up I told you like we don't care about the post body data inside of here we care about those in the passport functions that we'll write later on and the secret will simply be a get request so we don't need to do any validation over there so now let's actually do some testing I'm going to open a postman and then we're going to create a couple of requests both good and bad ones and we'll see how all of this works okay so I have a postman opened and what I want to do is to make some requests but I of course need to get this server up and running so I'm going to let me actually just change the font a tiny bit to be a smaller one and what you want to do is go um, node app.js and I'll need to allow access to it okay so now um, let us first of all go to this localhost 3000 slash user slash sign up and let's make a bad request so I'm not going to include the password something like this I click send and I actually get a response back from the server saying that validation failed pretty much, that the password is required and that yeah, it, it cannot proceed. And as you can see, we didn't get we didn't have this um this console.log statement uh, actually printed because that never actually executed, which is really good. We don't want we didn't really want to access the controller in that scenario. So now let us include a password but let us not include the email this time and we should see the similar thing now the email is required and now let us um, send all the values um, something like this and I click send and now as you can see the controller got called because everything was okay now of course this um, we're not responding back to the client in these controllers so of course this is going to be loading forever but what I want to do is simply show you the contents of this request.value.body um, object so I'm going to type console.log and then I'm going to say contents of request.value.body and let's simply pass that request.value.body and let me simply restart this once again we'll also take care of that we'll install nodeman really quickly but for now let's make one final um, manual restart and now if I send this we can see how by accessing this request.value.body object we actually have this validated data over here which we can then use to do all sort of things that we want to do now uh, as I've 
told you, like restarting the server manually for thousands of time gets really old really quickly. So what we want to do is actually install a Nodemon. Now some people suggest that you actually install a Nodemon as a global dependency and then you simply you can simply execute like nodemon and then app.js but what i like to do is to install it actually as a part of a project and then you don't need to worry about nodemons being of different versions for different projects so what we're going to do is simply install it as a normal dependency so i'm going to say yarn add um, nodemon like this you would of course say npm install dash dash save nodemon if you're using that and now what we want to do is to come to this package.json file and actually create a new script for us so we can say something like start um, dev because you don't really want to, to be using nodemon on the production server so we'll say start dash dev and then we'll simply say i'm um, nodemon and then app.js like this now this test, uh, we don't really need this command, so I'm going to get rid of it. And we also don't need this trailing uh, comma then, and all should be good to go. So now if I, okay, this is already stopped. So now if I type yarn start dev, or if you're using npm, you would type npm run start dev. And if we type one of those commands, you can see that the node one now is watching everything and it will auto restart for us. So I'll make this always on top and let me show you. Let's say we come to this file over here and we even make a new comment really. So this is a new comment and we save this file and you can see how the ser server got auto restarted. So uh, moving forward, that should help us a lot because we don't need to do manual restarting anymore. So um, this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you also learned a thing or two. And thank you very much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video in which we're actually tackling the Mongo database.